Happy birthday to our beloved second yellow Power Ranger, Karen Ashley, Hillary Duff, the Lethal Weapon Steve Blackman, and former host of 106 and Park, Jaleesa Bermudez. Xavier back again with another video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. My weekend was boring as hell, but I got a chance to watch some sports. Today's rant is sponsored by Mentos, the Fresh Maker, Lifesaver Gummies, Butterfinger. As Bart Simpson used to say, no one better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. <laughs> Man, I miss those Butterfinger commercials with the Simpsons. And bang. Potent brain and body fuel. Today from work, I got the peach mango flavor. Next time I'll get the pina colada once again. So I got some sports to do a recap on today. First up, we're going to do a recap of the Houston Astros regular season finale against the Texas Rangers from September 24th to September 27th. As you always, before I read the res give my thoughts, let's review the highlights. Ooh, let's start with Thursday's game. Oh man. Astros had a good start on Thursday in the first two innings. They scored two in the top of the first inning. They scored three in the top of the third inning. Neither team scored in the third and fourth inning. Astros scored two in the top of the fifth inning. Both teams scored three in the sixth inning. Rangers scored one in the bottom of the seventh. Neither team scored in the eighth inning, and the Astros scored nine in the top of the ninth. Woo! Final score on Thursday. Houston Astros 12, Texas Rangers 4. Astros open up a can of whoop-ass on the Rangers Thursday night. I was sleeping a little bit, but I'm glad I woke up throughout the entire game. Now let's talk about Friday's game that aired on my mama's birthday. I'm going to have to take my hat off in this one. Neither team scored in the first inning. The Rangers scored one in the bottom of the second. Neither team scored a run in the third and fourth inning. Both teams scored one in the fifth inning. Astros scored another run in the top of the sixth inning. Neither team scored in the seventh inning. Astros scored one in the top of the eighth, while the Rangers scored in the bottom of the ninth. Then they took it to an extra inning, where the Astros scored one in the top of the tenth, and the Rangers scored two in the bottom of the tenth. Final score, Texas Rangers five, Houston Astros four. Now let's talk about Saturday's game, which was very embarrassing. Neither team scored in the first five innings. Then the Rangers scored one in the bottom of the six. Astros scored one in the top of the seventh inning, while the Rangers scored five in the bottom of the seventh inning. And neither team scored in the last two innings. As the final score would be Houston or Texas Rangers six, Houston Astros five. Now let's talk about yesterday's game, the finale. Jose freaking Altuve scored a home run in the top of the first inning. Rangers scored one in the bottom of the second. Astros scored one in the top of the third inning. Then they scored another run in the top of the fourth inning, while the Rangers scored five in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rangers scored one in the bottom of the fifth. Neither team scored in the sixth inning. Rangers scored one 
in the bottom of the seventh inning. Astros scored one in the top of the eighth, and neither team scored in the ninth inning. Final score, Texas Rangers 8, Houston Astros 4. Astros finished their season with 29 wins and 31 losses. Man. I thought the Astros would beat I thought the Astros would have an opportunity to beat the Rangers to get their shit together but that was a tough loss for them on Friday, Saturday and Sunday you can't blame Dusty Baker I understand he's trying his best as the Astros head coach and GM even though I miss AJ Hinch Despite that the Astros did not have a good regular baseball season, they're still going to the playoffs. Tomorrow through Thursday, they'll be in the wild card round against the Minnesota Twins. So Astros, just enjoy your day off, get your shit together, keep your heads up, and get yourselves ready for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday in the first round of the playoffs. Ah, oh, man, I just can't believe... I hate how Astros win one game, then they lose another. They win one game, then they lose another. That's one thing I didn't like about the Astros in this regular baseball season. And I'm going to miss listening to the commentators of AT&T Sportsnet during these Astros games. Because the other commentators during the playoff game, they're boring as hell to listen to. But I'm going to start getting used to them. But I am going to miss the commentators in on AT&T Sportsnet and also AT&T Sportsnet reporter Julia Morales and her husband Matt just gave birth to their daughter Valerie this past weekend so congratulations to Julia Morales and your husband Matt for giving birth to your child she definitely looks just like Julia I'm so happy for Julia Morales and her husband, Matt, on the birth of their baby girl, Valerie. Now we're going to do a recap of this next game. Be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back. Now, we're going to be doing a recap of yesterday afternoon's game between the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I decided to not do this alone. I decided that I'm going to call one of my friends to be a part of this rant. You may know him. He's on YouTube as well. I call him my big brother, my right-hand man. You know what I'm saying? My partner in crime. So I decided that I'm going to FaceTime him so he can get his two cents on yesterday's game while I get my two cents on this game because I saw him do a rant earlier about this game so I decided that we're going to invite him as my special guest to be a part of this hopefully he answers his phone so we can get right into this Ladies and gentlemen, this is my special guest to do a recap of yesterday's game between the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers, my big brother, Mike Henry. What's going on, man? Oh, uh, hold on, let me get a sip of this drink, as you know. I'm about to lose my damn mind right now. I'm about to lose it right now. I did my rant about the dumb cold air that Sam Rowley thing. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to do that tonight Right after I do my outdoor workout You get my Xfinity TV guide To show a recap of yesterday's game Because I know you did your rant So I decided to not do this by myself So I decided to FaceTime you So we can do this together So I want to hear you 
Get your two cents about this game while I get my two cents about this game. Because I already saw Texans Girl and another YouTuber did their rants about this game. So now, let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. A recap of yesterday's game between the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Texans had a tremendous first quarter outscoring the Steelers 7-3. Then, in the second quarter, both teams scored 14 touchdowns apiece. At halftime, Texans 21, Steelers 17. Second half went from good to bad for the Texans. They didn't score shit in the third quarter, giving up a field goal. After three, Texans 21, Steelers 20. Fourth quarter, pretty much the same as the third. Texans didn't score shit once again, giving up a touchdown. Eight points to be exact. Final score, Pittsburgh Steelers 28, Houston Texans 21. And it says the player of the game was Pittsburgh Steelers running back James Conner with one rush touchdown. So, Mikey, before I get my two cents, I want to hear what is your two cents about this game? Well, the Texans got to hot start in the first half, but then things went from bad to worse in the second half. Third quarter, they got me pissed off was that defensive pass that was called on fourth and one. That got me upset. And the other one got me upset. Early in the fourth quarter, the Texans went to promised land in Steelers territory. And the shot wasn't through. And you know what? As much as I love Deshaun Watson, what I really don't like about him is that he be taking too damn long to figure out what is he going to do with the ball. Is he going to pass it to one of his teammates or is he going to run down to the field to score a touchdown? That's one thing that ticks me off about Deshaun Watson as our quarterback. But don't get me wrong. He is a top five best quarterback. But what I don't like about him is that he be holding on the ball too long and don't know what to do with it. Anyway, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was saying, early in the fourth quarter, Texas were in Seals territory and Deshaun Watson throws a crucial pick which led to the Steelers scoring the touchdown on the turnover. And just like that, the Texas ball are 0-3, 0-2 on the road, 0-1 on the crib because this coming Sunday, there's going to be 13,000 plus fans because I just saw an app pop down on my phone. There will be 13,000 plus fans attending to the crib to see the Texans take on the Minnesota Vikings where the Texans better look for their first win. Otherwise, they might as well fire their head coach slash GM, Bill O'Brien. Yeah, that motherfucker needs to go. Um, Bill O'Brien, he doesn't know what he's doing and... I just hope that the Texans get their shit together by Sunday. And not to mention, this Sunday is your mama's birthday, if I'm correct. That's right, October 4th. Because mm -hmm. yes, if they lose this, I'm sorry, if they lose, oh my God, I'm going to be pissed if they lose on my mama's birthday. Yep. The last thing they want to do is go over 4. Because y'all remember, 2018, two years ago, we started 0-3, won 9 straight, and then, the, and then the final four games, we ended up in a 2-2 split, went to the playoffs, and lost to the Colts. True. Been there, done that, and now, here we are, feeling like 2018. Unbelievable. Yep. And also, your mama and my mama are both Libras. My mama's birthday was this past Friday, and your mama's birthday is this upcoming Sunday. Ah, oh, man. Give Steelers credit because they came to play. Oh, he yeah. Is a, he is a tough, tough, tough Steelers quarterback. He yeah. Give it up to T.J. Watt, man. And you know, oh, yeah. the three brothers, J.J. Watt, Derek Watt, and T.J. Watt. I forgot. Yeah, I just read that we have three siblings, one playing for the Texans and the other two playing for the Steelers. J.J. Watt, T.J. Watt, and Derek Watt. Yeah, I just found out that they're all brothers.
Oh, man. But I cannot believe the test. I cannot believe the test is half the game won, but didn't score shit in the second half. Yeah, how can you go from a big lead? And the Atlanta Falcons pretty much did the same thing against the Chicago Bears. They also blew a big lead yesterday, from what I heard. Same thing happened last week against the Cowboys, which I saw it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And let's go off topic for a minute. Um, let's talk about the NBA. You guys know that my prediction of the M this year's NBA Finals came true. I predicted for this year's finals to be the Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat, and I'm surprised that my prediction came true. The Heat beat the Celtics last night, 125 to 113, closing out the series four games to two. And I thought they was going to choke a three to one lead, just like the Clippers did. But the Heat definitely got the job done, as well as LeBron, LeBron and the Lakers. They beat the Nuggets. Uh, four games to one in the Western Conference Finals. And now, this upcoming Wednesday is game one of the finals between the Lakers and the Heat. This will be the Lakers' first time in 10 years in the NBA Finals and the first appearance in the Finals without the presence of Kobe. And like you texted me yesterday, you hope that uh, Vanessa Bryan is watching. And this will be the Heat's first time in the finals in six years. Last time they went to the finals was in 2014 when they lost to Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs. And Choir Leonard won his first uh, championship. And this will be their first appearance in the finals without the presence of Dwayne Wade, who I hope is also watching his former team going to the finals. For the first time since 2014. It don't matter to me who I want to win. I just want to see a good NBA Finals game because I'm so happy that my prediction actually came true. So, do you have any more thoughts about yesterday's Texans Steelers game? That's all I got to say. I just couldn't believe that they didn't score shit in the second half. Hell no, they didn't. The first half, and now, now they better, now you gotta head home to take on the Vikings, where there's gonna be 13,000 plus fans. And trust me, if they lose my mom's birthday, oh my God, I'm gonna snap. They better win, because I'm hearing rumors that they want Bill of Ryan gone. Mm -hmm. This guy can't find a way to call shit. Nope. Well, if we don't have any more thoughts about this game, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts about the Houston Astros regular season finale against the Texas Rangers and my thoughts, our thoughts about yesterday's game between the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Special guest, my friend Mike Henry, thank you for joining me by doing a recap of this game so I wouldn't have to do it alone. Appreciate you coming by, my brother. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe if you like the content and hit that notification bell for my next Astros, Rockets, and Texans rant. If you're not new to my channel, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you didn't, leave your comment down below. I will leave Mikey's YouTube channel link in the description box below so you guys can check out his rants. I pretty much love all his videos. He does rants about the Longhorns, Astros, Rockets, and Texans, and rants about matches and segments from the WWF Attitude Era and WWE Ruthless Aggression Era. So make sure you subscribe to my brother, Mikey. So I will catch you guys later tonight, reminiscing 22 years of Stone Cold Steve Austin dropping a Zamboni and attacking Vince McMahon from the September 28th, 1998 edition of Raw is War. Don't follow your dreams. Chase them. Peace. Go Houston Astros and go Houston Texans.